Okay then, we're with the latest of the pre-season series sessions and the guest this time is Ryan Sidebottom. Ryan, how are you? Hi, welcome everyone. Thank you. Yeah, um, brilliant. Thanks. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, I can't complain. And I think now that we've been through just about every uh, season of weather in the Northwest today, it's got me thinking about the cricket season, definitely. So we're, we're up for that now. <laughs> it's certainly cricket season weather, isn't it now? It's cold, it's hot, it's cold, it's snowing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's really uh, sort of whetted my appetite for this conversation. And I think the place that we'll start with, Ryan, is taking a bit of a step towards probably the, yeah, the peak of your career, and that's representing your country. So if you can cast your mind back to that, what was your process for dealing with making that step up to play for England? Certainly. Uh, well, there's, there's kind of two sides. There's an A and a B side. In, in terms of my story, and I would say the A side is where I made my debut for England in 2001. Um, I'd only played a handful of county games, um, and then I went on A2 with England, did really well, and then was picked for England. And I was quite inexperienced, and it actually wasn't about bowling against world-class opposition. It was what was very daunting, and kind of what got me was the occasion um, you know, the sense of being under pressure, the crowd, um, you know, being on Sky, people scrutinising you before you even bowled one single delivery. And it didn't go to plan. Um, but actually, you know, I learned a lot from that day. You know, in, in someone's sporting career, you have lots of ups and downs and highs and lows. And, um, you know, I've, I've had so many um, you know, highs and so many lows. And that was probably one of the lows. But, you know, I learned from that day, you know, from experience and being quite immature and not understanding um, the mental side of, of playing professional sport. And then again, seven years later, um, having played thousands of games for, for my counties, to go back to playing for England, I was older, wiser, fitter, stronger. And mentally, I, I, was, I was very strong mentally. You know, I'd, I'd witnessed lots of ups and downs throughout my career. So going back into the England setup, I kind of knew what I needed to do. I, I knew I was a good bowler. I backed myself. Um, I was confident. Uh, and playing in front of big crowds didn't faze me. And it was just like bowling any other day, maybe out outside in the park with my son or with you know against my father or something like that so it shows the two sides of, of sport you know when you're young yes you have no fear but it affects people in different you know different scenarios and situations but I was just ultra confident and I backed myself and I knew that if I bowled how I could I'd be successful uh, when I play for England again and I got that opportunity and kind of never looked back but there's a process before that you know, there's lots of things that go on um, in the background, you know, the hard work, the drive, the dedication, um, the willingness to, to work harder and also self-analyze, you know, how can I be better? What am I doing wrong? And, and in a way, it's having people behind you or around you as well that are good sounding boards that you can talk to and they'll be honest with you. Uh, and for me, I had someone, Mark Elam, who played for England on, on lots of occasions. And he was a huge, huge sounding board for me in terms of he would just open my eyes to thinking about the game. And, you know, on this specific day, why did you do that? Why didn't you do that? Um, why were you thinking about doing that when you should have done that? And he, he sort of critiqued me in a way, but it was all in, in a positive manner. And he just got me thinking as a, as a bowler and I matured and, um, you know, I suppose I never looked back then. But, yeah, there's lots of situations that you find yourself in that you gain experience from to put you in that scenario. Mm. So it sounds like you got like that nice blend of you knew what you had to do and you were self-motivated and had that desire, but also being able to tap into the support that's, um, that's around you across your career. How important was having someone like Mark or a coach, a teammate, or even a friend outside of cricket to help you get over 
some of those setbacks that inevitably happen? Yeah, hugely important. It really is, you know, in a team environment. Yes, cricket, you know, you have to be a little bit selfish. It's it's down to you as a bowler or a, a batsman to go out there and score the runs, but it's still a team game. But you need those players to, you know, or a friend or a family member, a shoulder to cry on or someone you can go to. And, you know, they won't skirt around the subject and they'll be honest with you and, and tell you the truth. And sometimes it hurts and you don't like to hear it. And yeah, I've had a number of moments where I've been a little bit, um, want of a better word, a bit angry and annoyed and sort of gone away and thought, what's he on about? He's talking a load of rubbish. But as I've uh, sort of sat down and, and thought about it and given it some thought, I've, you know, over time it's like, oh, actually, yeah, that person makes total sense. And yeah, to have someone just to be like that, to, to go to and, and, and chat to and help you with your career. Uh, again, my father, you know, very lucky. Um, he never coached me. He always sort of wanted me to make it and stand on my own two feet and be Ryan side bottom and, and not Arnie side bottom. But some of the, you know, little snippets and, and little sentences that he gave me really helped me throughout my career. And one that always stood with me right from the start was just go out there and, and give it everything. Always give it 110%, 10%, never give up and, and play with a smile on your face. And, and he said, people will respect you for that. People will realise that, look, you don't always have a good day in the office. Everybody's the same, whether it's sport or going into work. You know, we don't always feel great. And he would say, but people will know if you're giving it 100% every time you go out there, people will love watching you perform because they want the, you're a winner, you're a trier. And that always kind of stuck with me uh, ever since. You know, I always wanted to be like that and... and give it absolutely everything and, and play with kind of pride and passion. You know, people nowadays, you don't see it as much, do you, in cricket? Um, maybe because people don't, you get told, oh, you can't behave like that, you can't do that. But I, I want to see a bit of passion, a bit of honesty and a bit of, you know, people wanting to win a little bit more. Do you think that that passion and just, yeah, 100% all-in kind of attitude is what led to you being able to maintain confidence yeah definitely I would I mean I I would always enjoyed getting away from cricket so if I'd had a bad day at the office I would drive home in the car I would have 10 minutes and I would self-analyze I'd go yeah you've had a bad day um what did you do wrong what could you do better tomorrow's another day and also I'd just kind of think you know what you know, I'm very fortunate, I'm very lucky and you know, I'm going home to my kids and, and my wife and what real worries do I have? And, and that kind of helped me. Everybody's different. And that helped me get over a poor day and, and tomorrow was always another day and, and I'd be up for the challenge and, and try and be better the next day. And, you know, everybody's different. We all have um, our own little scenarios where how we can be better or, or improve and that was just my little bit of an outlet in the car. And I try not to, you know, wallow in, in self-pity and negativeness and, and think about it all the time because that's when it can go that, you know, have an adverse effect in you, you know, then the next day you're still thinking about what happened the day before. And one thing that I always like to, to, to ask, uh, and I know this because a lot of people will ask me to ask almost is even as someone who is a successful international cricketer playing in the best venues around get having all this glory what's it like I suppose mentally to face off against someone who is it to for want of a better term it, you know, an intimidating figure because of their ability so I'm just thinking off the top of my head someone like Ricky Ponting He's absolute great of a player. As much as you want him to stay confident and that's your go-to, when he's getting on top of things, on top of the whole team, on top of sort of any bowler, what's that like? How does that feel inside when you kind of, you've met someone who's almost unstoppable? 
is difficult because the thoughts come into you, the process and the thoughts come into your head of, oh, wow, um, he's on top form today. You know, am I good enough, um, you know, to, to challenge him um, as a batsman? And again, it's all kind of mental, you know, in your head, what do you want to be a shrinking violet and sort of, oh, take a backward step and, and let him get the better of you? Or you can see it as a, as a challenge to, you know, perform and, and get the better of the best and get out the best and be successful against the best. And, and again, probably, you know, for, for anyone listening, I, I, I wasn't the greatest bowler. You know, when I first started, there was bowlers better than me, but I just had the confidence and I, and I believed that I would be better than them. And I, I was driven and determined to be better. And I think same goes when you're playing against someone who you kind of know is more talented than you, you know, is a, a world great, um, famous around the world and, you know, a world-class player. And look, you've just got to be confident and have that self-belief in your own ability that one, you're good enough to be there. And two, you're good enough to try and get this, you know, to get this person out. Because if you don't, they will certainly get the better of you because that is what they want. They want to see kind of the fear in your eyes or whether you're up for the challenge. Mm. So yeah, that word I think is the one that jumps out. So that kind of situation you'd have looked on as a challenge rather than a threat. Yeah, absolutely. I would always play see playing against the best as a challenge and not think, oh, I'm playing against this person or a Sachin Tandulka that I want to get that person out. You know, I want to go in the bar afterwards or I want to go home and tell my parents that I've just got Sachin out. And, and that's how I, you know, went out there and tried to be as confident as I possibly could. Even though inside, you know, inside, yeah, of course I'm nervous. You know, I think it's natural for anyone to be nervous. And yes, I was the same. You know, there are those self-doubts that, creep in you go I'm a good enough can I do it can I get him out and but on the outside you've got to try and portray that you are confident and you you want to win um, and you're desperate to win and and that's you know again the fine line between sport isn't it you know do you sit back or do you try and go for it and and it's such a fine line sport is such a fine line the difference between winning and, and not quite getting there mm. now with all that around the very top of the game and some of those yeah all-time greats that are in the mix when you then went back to play county cricket which of course very demanding lots of quality players there but not the intensity of the test match or ODI arena how did you manage to deal with that transition because I'd imagine there's a temptation even if you didn't succumb to it to take it a little bit easier because it's not got that that, that intensity of course um it's difficult because you know when you're representing your country that the pressures that come with playing international cricket again you scrutinized constantly um you don't have much time to yourself to think you, you're training so hard and yes going back to county cricket you again it can be difficult um i will sort of talk about myself i i knew the hard how hard and difficult it is to play county cricket. It is tough, you know, day in, day out, the grind, the travelling. So I, I respected it. Um, I, I knew what, you know, players go through, you know, the injuries and, and playing with injuries and niggles and bowling 25 overs in a day. So actually for me, it wasn't difficult because I'd, I'd learned that from a young age that, you know, you've just got to go back to county cricket and, and give it absolutely everything because at the end of the day, they're your teammates and, and you can't let your team down. You know, whether you're playing for England or not and, and you, you think you're a big-time Charlie, they'll bring you down to earth very, very quickly, I promise you, and so will the game. And I always, you know, went back and, and tried to give it absolutely everything and, you know, pass on my knowledge and look like I, I was even keener because, um, you know, you want to you wanna win all the time and I always wanted to do well for, for my teammates and my team and yeah it, county cricket is really really tough but for me it was it, I wouldn't say it was easy but I, I'd had that throughout my career so I, I found the balance between the two and how to behave and how to go back to county cricket and 
and crack on and and work hard and work even harder and help help my teammates. Yeah, and some of what you've mentioned there touches on uh, something I'd like to ask about the the potential for burnout and and being overloaded with cricket given the schedules, whether that be within county cricket or internationally with the touring and so on. Was that something that had an impact on you during your career? Oh, I would say probably probably not. Um, again, I've been very lucky to have a number of fantastic coaches who are great with personalities and and I would say the best coaches have all been fantastic man managers and and they will identify or see straight away if someone's tired, struggling, struggling mentally, um, needs a little bit of a break. And, and I think as you get older and you become a senior player, you know, when you're a shy youngster and you've got all these big, you know, big characters in the dress room and senior players, you kind of, you don't really say very much. But as we got older, I realised that, yeah, I might need a, an extra day off. And, and by that, it wasn't just be at home or go have a night out. It was more, you know, to look after myself, go, you know, just go to the gym, have a swim, um, have a massage, um, maybe have a nice bath and just, you know, look after the body to prolong, one, to prolong my career and two, to make sure I'm, I'm fit and ready because it is a long, hard, tough season and you don't get much time or a break to, you know, look after the little niggles. So I, I would say now, you know, the coaches do identify when players need a rest, when they don't need a rest, when they need to kick up the backside, when they feel that a player's not pulling his weight. And generally, I, all the coaches I've had have been fantastic at that. They really have in identifying, you know, who needs what at that specific time. And, you know, the best man managers have all done that really, really well. Well, that is good to hear because so often we get these stories from players who reached a crisis point with their physical or indeed sort of mental fitness and had such a, a big effect on them. Moving towards the end of your career then, having played so much professional cricket and then having a time of the year like this where everyone else is just about to get going and, and play their, their cricket and you weren't, what was that transition like? What were the challenges involved in that? Well, having, again, having a 22-year career as a pro, it, it was weird because I, I announced my retirement in 2017 at the start of the season, thinking that, you know, it would be sort of a good, positive feel that everyone at the club would be like, right, come on, it's Ryan's last year, let's go out there. I know what, you know, I've got to do in terms of, you know, trying to contribute and I always said to my family at the time that I would I'd love to just have a break I have a holiday something I never had a bank holiday I was always training or busy and you know you think that is the ideal and it, and it wasn't the case I was very lucky because I coached Surrey in 2018 and they happened to win the county championship and then I went on Dance on Ice um, in 2019 but once everything stopped and I had time to reflect and think, I actually really, I probably didn't miss playing, but I really missed the camaraderie and the team spirit and having something to get up to and get your teeth into and, and, and a focus and a drive that I had throughout my career. And yes, I, you know, again, to people listening, you know, I've, I've spoken about it on a regular basis. I have struggled with my mental health. Um, you know, I have days where I, I'm quite anxious. I get agitated, um, a little bit emotional. And I used to sort of sit, sit and think, what's wrong with me? Why, why is this happening? You know, I, I shouldn't feel like this. It shouldn't be like this. And, you know, I, I got a little bit of help, but, you know, I've seen a counsellor. Um, you know, I take a little bit of medication, which I've said on, on numerous occasions. I've, I'm not, you know, shy about the fact that I, I needed help. And it was just, yeah, I, I missed cricket. I missed the adrenaline rush. You miss the, I would say, the adulation and being out there and competing and being in the battle. And, you know, on days off when I was at home, it was like, what am I going to do? What am I doing? Like, what, you know, where's my self-worth? Where's, you know, 
my importance now? Where where's my career going? And you know, I've, excuse me. Um, you know, I found that. Sorry, I found that you know really really difficult a difficult period, and you know I'm out the other side now, and and I think you know again it it's helped me to talk. You know, I didn't always open up when I played cricket. You know, I was so focused on on winning and you know doing the little one percenters and making sure I was fit as possible. And yes, you have friends, but you don't always open up because it's quite embarrassing. Whereas now I've had a you know with my wife and my my best mates to have an outlet to just talk and and you know get things off my chest um, emotionally and, and and mentally. And, and I found that's really, really helped me massively just to talk. It, it is good to talk, believe you me. And, you know, I think in a world at the moment, as we all know, you know, with social media and the keyboard warriors and the war, you know, the horrible war that, you know, with COVID, you know, there's a lot of negatives. And, and I feel, you know, it is good to be kind. We want to be kinder to one another and, and we're not. Um, and that needs looking at. Um, but I think also we just, let's talk, you know, ring your mates up, ring your parents up, talk to them, tell them how you feel. And at first I found it very, very difficult. I really did. I didn't want to. Um, but now over time, I've got used to just expressing my feelings and, and getting how I'm feeling across on a not a great day if I'm having a bad day. And, and I found it's really, really helped. And hopefully, you know, me saying this, which I didn't want to at first, has helped one person, two people to to come forward and say, you know what, I'm I'm struggling with anxiety or my mental health and I'm finding these issues. And if I can just pass on my knowledge and, and what's happened to me, um, all well and good. Yeah, absolutely. And that's that's what it's all about. I've, everything you've said there, I've been nodding away because it just rings so true with experiences I've had, but, but so many other people there. And um, just to reflect on the importance of talking, now that you, you're kind of used to doing it and have seen the benefit, when you're working with, whether it be, say, young players, older players, or just speaking with anyone inside or outside of the game, what would your, your tip be to get them to, to consider that as an option a bit earlier? Because a lot of us come to talking about how we feel after we've had a real low. So how can we get people to maybe embrace it a bit earlier before the bigger problems start yeah well again from experience you know learning from the best coaches who again were the best man managers and you know to the, the younger generations now that I kind of do when I do a little bit of coaching you know I just talk to them about the game but you know I ask them how they're feeling everything all right what you know what what do you do in your spare time as well so I try and get a little bit out of them not just solely how's your cricket going, you know, how are you playing? Because young lads, are, you know, and girls, you know, not, not, just, not just boys, you know, the girls that are coach as well, um, you know, just to say, oh, how's your cricket doing? And, and they don't really give you much feedback. Whereas if you, you know, how, how's your parents? What do your parents do? Um, you know, what are you up to? What do you like doing in your spare time? Do you like rugby? Do you like football? And, you know, over time, you get that trust. And you get out of that shyness from the individual who you're coaching. And then all of a sudden, they, they want to talk to you. Um, you know, they'll ask you questions. You know, and then some mornings I'll turn up and go, all right, sir, how are you doing? How's your, you know, how's your daughter doing? Is she all right? And, you know, all of a sudden, you've got that, that two-way conversation. And, you know, I, I kind of wish I had that from, you know, my early career. You know, I was just really quiet. I would hide in a corner. I didn't want to talk to anyone. I just wanted to get on with my cricket and then go home. And now I think it's really helped. It really helps to identify different personalities and characters and what makes people tick. And for me, having learned that, that's how I try and coach now is not just about cricket, but to find out about that individual and, and just, are you all right? Do you fancy a cup of coffee? You know, whether the 12 years old or 18 years old, you know, they're still, you know, can be quite insular and, and just to have that conversation, you know, adult to adult, not just adult to child. I find it, it really, really helps. And, you know, that's how I try and coach now. But again, 
I've learned that over probably 25 years of playing professional sport. It just doesn't happen overnight. So that's what I would say is find out about the person and, and them as a personality and what they, what they get up to. Because um, they probably want you to know that as well about them, but they're just too shy to say it. Yeah. Uh, the final one then, Ryan. Um, given all your vast experience in cricket, as well as being open and honest about mental health as a topic, what is there in your life which you make sure you do to keep yourself mentally healthy and fit? Yeah, so so now, you know, if, if I'm not working or I've got a few days at home or I've, I've got a, a week, I will, you know, I'll make sure that my diary's full, whether it's, you know, going for a walk on the beach, um, you know, going for a run, going to the gym, going for a swim, um, doing some gardening, just, again, just to keep the mind active and, and fresh and not sit and overthink. Um, you know, my children at an age where they're now playing sport themselves, uh, football and cricket daft and golf, and so that does keep me active. But I, I would say just keeping the mind active when I, have, when I know I'm not doing anything on a specific day is to just try and make sure whether I write down in my diary or, or whatever that, you know, I've got something to get up and, and look forward to or, or work at. Okie dokie, yeah. So as we finish, uh, county, championship, county championship season, not far off now, and you have been involved uh, back at Yorkshire, which must have been brilliant, particularly working with, uh, with Darren Goff and an exciting group of players there. So what's your thoughts ahead of this season for that group, but... I suppose, in general, across the county game? Yeah, I mean, the county game has come under a little bit of scrutiny, hasn't it, with sort of England's failures. Um, but I'm excited by the season. Yes, you know, I was at Yorkshire for, for about five weeks. Um, you know, with the situation, what happened at Yorkshire, Goffey just wanted me to go back as, as a mate. And they've got a very, very talented young crop of players coming through. So it was just nice to be at the other side and, and chat to them and, and see how they're all getting on. And, you know, they're really excited by this season. And, but yeah, the, the county championship, look for me. I had such a wonderful time. The county championship gave me a sounding board to go on and, and to a higher level and play, for, you know, play international cricket. And it has come, had a lot of, well, negative criticism, but for me, the county, where do you get your England players from? Well, they don't, you don't just pull them off the street. Um, you know, it's the players that are consistent over a long period of time that get identified as England players. So, yeah, the county championship is brilliant. I just, I, I feel that one thing that needs looking at is just a schedule, you know, to have county cricket at the start and then not see almost throughout the, the summer period and then to have it at the back end when it starts to get cold again, you get due and, you know, it's not ideal. And if we were to have... a uh, a strong England cricket test team, I think the schedule really needs looking at. And, and also techniques. Um, techniques need looking at as well because there's so much one-day cricket that, you know, you can get out of te technical deficiencies very, very quickly. But I love the counter game. You're going to get your test players from the counter game and let's cherish it and look after it. Yes, we can kind of tinker with it a little bit, but for me, just make sure it's played throughout the year and you've got your best players playing. There we go. I think that's a perfect place to finish. Ryan, thank you for your time. Loads Pleasure. of people to uh, digest, and I wish you all the well, all well with what's going on in the future. Thank you. Thanks.